In astrophysics, a lot of times we're concerned with finding the distance to a star. Once we know that, then we can actually know lots of other things about them and uh, know about their own properties. But in order to know the distance to something without actually traveling there to you know, physically measure it, uh, it actually gets pretty tough. So the first way, this is for things that are really close to us, we can use what's called the parallax method. So this has to do with uh, the fact that when we look up at a star, it appears, you know, if we see all the other background stars, the star we're looking at might appear in one spot, and six months later, maybe it appears to have moved a little bit uh, compared to the other background stars. So if it appears to move, and six months later it moves again, and six months later it moves, we say that's parallax. This only works for the closest stars, but uh, here's how it works. Uh, you can see parallax uh, in action anytime as long as you have two working eyes and a thumb or a finger. All you have to do is hold out your thumb and use only one eye, for example, so I'm closing my left eye. And as I look, for example, my thumb, I can look at a foreground uh, or sorry, a background object and I can see that, okay, my thumb is lined up with something in the background. Now change which eye is open and you're going to see that your thumb appears to have jumped. It didn't actually jump, it's only because you've got one eye over here, one eye over here, and they see the same thing, but it appears somewhere else or somewhere else. So that's what parallax uh, error is. Well, in this case, we actually use this method in order to tell the distance to a star. So this is the idea here. Um, so we could be, let's say we're in orbit here. So this is the Earth, uh, and we're going around in orbit around the Sun. Uh, maybe I should make this a little bit bigger, but oh well. This is the, there's the sun. Now, our distance, this is the earth, let's say here, and this is the earth here. So this is us going around. So this is the earth, maybe in January. And this could be the earth, maybe, uh, I don't know, in July, let's say. Basically at opposite ends of the year. It doesn't matter when you do it, this is just an example. Now one thing that we know though is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. It's not exactly constant, but we're going to assume it's um, a certain value here. And we actually call this 1AU. That means one astronomical unit. And this, you can look this up in your data booklet for how many meters that is, but it's basically the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. Now what's cool about this is that, let's say now that over here we're looking up at a star. So I'm just going to draw something here to give us a bit of geometry here. So let's say I draw something like this and something like, whoops, I didn't draw this very well. This is supposed to match up with this. this I'm a lousy artist. Here we go. Let's just say, hey, look at that, it worked out perfectly. So there was the Earth. I'm just not a very good artist. So what happens is this. On Earth, let's say in January, we look up at this star and it appears that the star is, you know, if I continue this line right here, it appears that the star is here. Uh, maybe I'll put this a little bit lower. So the star appears here. Whereas six months later, the star appears to be here. So you see, uh, the star appears to move compared to all the background stars. So what we can do then is, if we know our distance here, which we do, and if we know this angle, which we can tell then based on how uh, the star seems to have jumped, this angle we're going to call this angle P, P for parallax angle. And then we have this distance right here, this whole distance right here, that's going to be D. That's going to be the distance away. And that's what we want. We want that distance there. And it turns out for sufficiently small angles, then you don't have to worry about sines, cosines, or tangents. They effectively sort of go away. So then what you can do then is you can write this equation, and this is the one that's in your data booklet. It goes like this. D equals 1 over P. That's the equation. So that's in your data booklet. And it's important, though, to know what units we use for this. So D is the distance to the star, but it's measured in parsecs. In other words, one parsec. And then P is the parallax angle. And it's actually measured in arc seconds. 
Now what that is, is that there are 3,600 arc seconds in one degree. This is because when we look up at the sky uh, and we see these stars moving, you might think, oh, maybe they move a lot, barely anything. It's so difficult to even detect this star moving. It moves so little. If you imagine, you know, going around 360 degrees, you know, that's a full circle. So take one whole circle and divide that into 360 equal pieces. So that tells you what one degree is. So one degree is, you know, really small. But that's way too big still. It moves so little that actually it's, we have to break up a degree into 3,600 equal parts. We call each of those an arc second. So the parallax angle will be measured in just a few arc seconds. In other words, you know, a few thousandths of a degree is all that star appears to move. So barely anything. But if we do detect it, then we can tell the distance with pretty good accuracy, actually. Now remember, though, that one parsec is approximately, well, it's equal to uh, 3.26 light years. So then we can actually tell the distances to stars as long as we see the parallax happening. This is good for distances of a few hundred parsecs. Anything further than that, we actually can't detect it moving. Technically, every star should do this. The problem is, is that they're so far away. You know, imagine trying to do this thumb trick, for example, with something that's like, well, millions and billions and trillions of meters away. You won't see anything really changing, even though it does. It's just that it's so small, you can't detect it. So that's why this method works well for close things. Okay, things within a few hundred parsecs. After that, it sort of falls apart. So it, it doesn't really work because we don't have good enough accuracy to measure those small, small angles. Now, another way to tell uh, is the methods that, I've been, uh, that I showed you earlier. So with luminosity and magnitudes. So this whole apparent brightness is luminosity over 4 pi d squared. That's one way. And the way we actually do this is because uh, now we measure the apparent brightness, we want to get the distance, but that means we need to know luminosity. But what we can do is, remember I talked about the HR diagram. So if we see something, depending on its uh, spectral class, we can take a spectrum of a star, and take a look at sort of what it's made of. From there, we know its class. And from there, we know then roughly where it sits on the HR diagram, which means we can infer its luminosity. It's a bit dodgier though, because certain things of certain spectral classes might actually be a little bit higher in the diagram than we expect, but it gives us a pretty good estimate. So this is things where we can see a spectrum, as long as it's a main sequence star and it behaves like we expect, then we can use this method. Of course, this method is actually the same as this method, even though, I mean, the physics behind it at least is the same, even though it looks totally different. Right, because this is what we see on Earth compared to what's actually being emitted. And there's the distance effect. This is in meters. Remember, distance in meters. Whereas here, this is apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude, which is this arbitrary log scale here. And this distance right here, that's in parsecs. So that's another way of telling distances to stars, okay, with magnitudes, or we can also do it for closer ones with parallax. Now parallax is actually quite um, good. It is a very low, um, I guess you could say uncertainty. In other words, these are, the, these are the best results we have are actually using parallax method. The problem is we're limited to only our close neighborhood, so to speak. But these ones we know very well. So there's other methods as well, which I'm going to talk about in the next video, uh, namely C-feed variables.